Earlier we looked at the world record wheat variety Einstein and while it is a good yielding variety it's also a slow starter but over here we've got a variety called Revenue which is much more vigorous and produces a better canopy and vigorous wheat varieties are the subject of a GRDC funded project studying plant vigour as a weed management tool. Paul Lush is no whinger, but he's just about had a gutful. Well, we've had this problem for since the uh, early 1980s. Uh, we've been uh, battling ryegrass here for 30 years. Uh, we've probably had resistant ryegrass here for 20 years. Weeds or not, you'd think he'd be happy with a crop like this, but Paul's got good reason to be unimpressed. It's frustrating because uh, it came up late in this crop and it's going to knock uh, probably 50% of the yield off in places. But what if the boot was on the other foot? What if the wheat we grew was so quick to get out of the ground and had such great early vigour that it suppressed the weeds, providing its own defence? Well, just down the road, some GRDC-funded research is close to giving breeders lines like that to work with. Getting out of the blocks faster and covering the interrow space faster, shading the weeds, grabbing the nutrients and water, so it's sort of always ahead of the game. It's all about selecting for high early vigour. The, the leaf width is, is much greater yeah. in, in the vigour lines. It can be up to double the size of the commercial varieties. Hmm. Now what, you may say, well, what does that mean? So the, the benefit of that is that having wide leaves means the plant is intercepting more light and uh, higher photosynthesis and higher early growth which is what we measure. Having greater vigour above ground means you, you have more assimilates available for the roots to grow and that's where you get the benefits of better water uptake and better nutrient uptake. So the whole system that integrates nicely into a faster growth rates and greater suppression of weeds. After starting with 6,000 lines from CSIRO's High Vigour Wheat Project, Gurjeet and his team here at Roseworthy has whittled it down to about 25 of the best performing ones. And they're putting them up against some of the best currently available commercial varieties, using oats to simulate weed pressure. Both here and in trials in WA, the competitive cultivars, as they're known, have shone. Selection has not really occurred for, uh, for yield for this, for this work, so the yield aspect isn't quite there, but with a full weed infestation, their yields are actually will be above a uh, commercial variety. It's not just about growing a crop that'll give you a good yield this year in competition with the weeds that it's got to deal with. It's also about suppressing those weeds so they don't get a chance to set seed to give you a problem next year. If you look at this, this is one of the current commercial varieties that's out there and there's really quite a lot of ryegrass in there and it's all getting a chance to go to head. But over here, this is one of the competitive cultivars and there's still ryegrass between the rows but it's not doing very well and it's not going to get a chance to set seed quite so much. And so next year, not so big a problem because there's just not going to be the seed available for the ryegrass to do its thing. It should never be seen as a a solution to weed management. We only see this providing an additional tool, but in its own right, it will allow the weed escapes uh, to be suppressed, so we're getting 50, 60% reduction in their performance by having these varieties integrated as part of the system. So if you suppress the weeds by about 50% or 60% with this, and then at the other end of the season, you catch the seeds, the, the remaining seeds with the chaff cart, and you, you achieve another 50% reduction, then you've got a total of 75% or thereabouts. Exactly. And that, that's really uh, where it starts to become a stable system. Uh, because at the moment, uh, what we're getting is uh, wheat is a weak link in our production system, and it is our number one crop. So that's the dilemma for farmers, that it is seen as a really valuable crop, a reliable crop, but at the same time, this is where we're getting the highest amount of weed seed set. Amazingly, CSIRO's research which gave us these new breeding lines wasn't even focused on finding solutions to problem weeds at all, but on drought. Originally we were looking at weeds with the capacity for large leaf area, so very vigorous weeds that could shade the soil surface and reduce the amount of 
water that normally evaporates away, reduce that from evaporation so it can be kept for the plants to grow. So it's a drought tolerance. The CSIRO work has been going on since the mid-90s with GRDC backing. We were interested in how we could make wheats more vigorous and we knew very much that Australian wheats had very little vigour. So there was a need to look beyond our shores and look at the diversity, wheat diversity, right across the globe. Australian wheats had benefited enormously from the dwarfing genes uncovered in the 50s by that giant of wheat breeding, Norman Borlaug, in Mexico. But the time had come to look beyond their limitations. The way that these dwarfing genes affected height provided a handbrake to early vigour. So attributes we enjoyed with the older tall wheats, the greater vigour, the longer coleoptiles, the ability to sow deep, we lost when we moved to these these back then newer dwarfing genes. And so we looked um, across uh, probably 30 countries and brought in about 5,000 wheats. From those 5,000, the CSIRO team identified the 16 best and embarked on a cycle of crosses between those wheats and eventually with some commercial varieties. That was the material that was delivered to Gurji. So it had science around the genetic control of vigour the identification of diversity from overseas for vigour, and then the bringing together, the marrying of new sources of dwarfing so we could maintain reduced plant height, reduced lodging, high yield potential, but also maintain that high early vigour in the long coleoptile. The wheats in Gurjeet's project are based on CSIRO's third cycle of crosses. They're now up to cycle six, with material perhaps even more promising. Gurdjieff will see some of that material before too long, I hope. So yeah, we've got material there which look not too dissimilar to sorghum. So very, very vigorous wheats um, with the capacity to almost completely suppress weeds. Uh, capacity to uh, grow like barley and shade the soil surface to reduce water loss, so improve water productivity. And maybe an imp improve nitrogen and, and phosphorus use efficiency. So with early vigour, targeting drought tolerance, we, we seem to be getting all these wonderful spin-offs with real capacity for, for use, uh, for, I guess, for release to growers. So, getting on for 20 years since the first GRDC investment in this work, it's on the verge of delivering lines to commercial breeders and the final step to seeing new varieties in the hands of farmers. It is a long-term investment and you need confidence from the funding bodies to, to continue the work, otherwise it ends up delivering nothing for anyone. Down the road though, Paul Lush would have it tomorrow if he could. We're terribly excited about getting a wheat that will compete and, and knock the, the ryegrass seed setting ability back. So that'll help us in the years after the wheat crop. So yeah, terribly excited. The issue of ground cover that contained this DVD also has an article on high vigour wheat. So have a look at that.